let us go back to one more generalization of the stochastic differential equation that we have modeled for our price process, which is called the generalized Wiener process that we have done. In that, you can clearly see that the mu and sigma that were sitting in your stochastic differential equations were constant in the case of generalized Wiener process model. But in the real life, price doesn't have a fixed mean and standard deviation. They vary every time. Okay. They not only every time, they also vary based on the price of the asset itself. In fact, if in options, if you see, the option prices directly depend on the underlying asset price. Okay, So therefore, the generalized Wiener process that we have modeled in the previous section by considering these parameters mu and sigma as constant is a oversimplified model as far as the practical situations are concerned. One step close to reality is to consider the parameters as the function of the stochastic process itself and also they depend on time. Such a process is called Ito process. Unlike generalized Wiener process, the solution for Ito process is not that simple because you can see that even if you formally take an integration over 0 to t on both sides, you see the complication involved in handling these two integrals because the integrand is no longer a constant here. And here, of course, you have more complication because of this kind of terms, right? So this is called Ito integral. We will not go into the study of Ito integrals and especially we will not go into the study of how to solve such stochastic differential equations. Rather, our interest in this section is to just state and prove an important lemma called Ito lemma. We'll recall that W here is the Wiener process and the drift mu and the volatility parameter sigma are now taken as the functions of X and T. And the stochastic process X governed by this kind of stochastic differential equations is called the Ito process. And we may also use this form of the equation instead of this form. This is the differential form of the equation, whereas this is the integral form of the equation called stochastic integral equation. What we have done, we have just basically integrated on both sides in a formal sense, but that has its own meaning, but we will not get into the discussion of giving meaning for these integrals and in general, how to handle them and all are the subject of stochastic differential equations. So we will not get into more details in this direction. Rather, we will try to prove this lemma called Ito's lemma that gives something called Ito formula. That is very useful for us, especially while studying option prices. So let us first state the lemma. We are given a Ito process. Recall Ito process means it is obtained as a solution of the stochastic differential equation dx equal to mu of x comma t. So this coefficient depends on x and t dt plus sigma of x and t that is the catchy point here into dw. If mu and sigma are constant, such a process is called the generalized Wiener process. Here it is coming as the solution of this differential equation. Therefore, it is Ito process. And we have another random variable, y, or the stochastic process y, which is written as a function of x and t. So since x is a stochastic process, more precisely, it's a Ito process, y is also a 
stochastic process now the question is is y also an iter process well let us see where the function sorry this is capital f you may have to change it in the notes also this is twice differentiable with respect to the first argument that is x and it is continuously differentiable with respect to the second argument which is t therefore this capital f is twice continuously differentiable with respect to x and one time continuously differentiable with respect to t okay since it is defined on the xt plane therefore we have written it as r2 here then the lemma says that if you define y like this then y is also an eto process means it can be obtained as a solution of a stochastic differential equation of this form perhaps this mu and sigma may be different okay let us denote them by mu f and sigma f of course i should have ultimately written it as x comma t and or maybe y comma t and this as y comma t but it is understood because i am saying that y is eto process therefore the coefficients when we talk about eto process are understood as function of the process and time itself even if we don't mention it one has to understand with the word eto here well what is mu f and sigma f they are given by these expressions let us see in what way these expressions stand different from the classical calculus point of view if you recall suppose you have a function y defined as f of x where x is also a function of t and t then dy can be written as do f by do x into dx by dt plus do f by do t into dt by dt times dt right assume that this term is equal to mu then we have mu times do f by do x plus do f by do t into dt this is what we have learnt in our calculus course when x is a ordinary function of t but here x is coming as a stochastic process and that brings a new term into picture you can see that in the calculus course this term is not there of course by saying that x is a ordinary function and not a random variable you mean to say that this value sigma is zero right there is no standard deviation therefore this term goes off and you have this so you can see that in the stochastic calculus you have this extra term coming and sitting into your first term because of the randomness in the variable this is what we call as eto calculus we will now try to prove this lemma for that we will first take f is equal to f of x comma t that is f is a function of x and t that is how we have taken f and just for the derivation purpose we will assume f to be smooth that is because we are not going into the rigorous proof of the lemma we will just to do it with a very formal and convenient calculations and see just to have a feeling of how that extra term is coming into the deterministic part so once you assume f is smooth you can liberally write the taylor expansion for this remember f is a function of two variables therefore you have to put two variable taylor expansion that is given like this well i am not worried about what comes later because finally i am going to ignore all the terms that are of small o delta t it means all the terms which involves the power of delta t which is more than 1 now if you recall the discrete version of the eto process is given like this because dx equal to mu of x comma t dt plus 
sigma of x comma t d w is what is the ito process therefore its discrete version may be written like this just notationally i am talking everything has their own meanings but we are just talking all this in a notational sense where dw was given by epsilon of t into root dt right therefore delta w is written like this delta w is epsilon of t into root delta t now you can see that delta x can be written as mu of x comma t into delta t plus sigma epsilon into root delta t. now if i square this then what happens delta x square is going to be mu delta t square plus epsilon square sigma square into delta t comes plus some other terms so this term which is the first order term as i told i am not going to worry about any term whose power is going to be something greater than 1 that is what is mean by small o of delta t so here the power of delta t is greater than 1 therefore i am not going to worry about that and other terms comes in the squaring part we'll also have the factor delta t to the power of something more than 1 right so i am not going to write all that but i am just going to only write delta x square equal to that term which is coming as the square of this plus square of this i am observing into this plus two times this into this will also have the power of delta t something greater than 1 you see therefore that is also observed into this term okay so since i am going to anyway neglect them completely with the argument that whenever i work with small value of delta t this term dominates when compared to all the higher powers of delta t that was the argument generally we will give to neglect this term so simply we will neglect this term and consider this as an approximation see once you neglect this this is not exactly equal but approximately equal okay so now i will therefore put this into the expression and try to see how this looks like right so we have this taylor expansion we took the ito process wrote its discrete form and squared it that gave us this expression with some terms which i am not going to really care about because finally i am going to neglect what matters for me is only the first order terms okay now this i am going to put into this expression and that gives me this you see i am just taking all do f by do x for separately right recall that this is taken as delta x equal to mu dt that is how this term is coming here plus sigma epsilon root delta sorry this is delta t and that is what is sitting here so this is precisely coming from your ito process discrete version and then this is as it is we are keeping now for this i am just putting this expression and that gives me this plus small o of delta t and all others just observe that all others are going to involve delta t to the power of something where that something is strictly greater than here you see this is this is one but then this is carrying already a delta t and root delta t. so that when multiplied with this will contribute to the power of delta t something more than one all others are as such starting from square therefore you don't need to think anything for the other terms so all other terms are just merged with this notation and i will not explicitly write it because i am anyway going to neglect them now i'm just rewriting this term in this form okay what i am doing is i'm just taking delta t out now therefore mu into do f by do x plus this delta t gives me do f by do x plus there is a delta t here that gives me this right and then i have root delta t term and that i am writing here 
And that's all, all the terms which are of importance to me are covered here. All other which are of higher order are just merged with this notation. So again, I'm just writing this epsilon into root delta t as delta w. That is how we have defined that Wiener process. Therefore, this. So finally, we have delta f equal to this. Okay. So we have derived delta f is equal to this term. Now we have little more work to see what is the contribution of this term in this expression. For that, we will take the variance of epsilon square delta t and see what is happening to it. Okay. Basically, I want to convince that this is not at all going to be a random variable. That is what I am trying to convince you. For that, we will take this. If you show that this is going to be almost zero for very small delta t, you see then there is no randomness involved in this, right? At least as delta t tends to zero, ultimately we are going to take delta t going to zero, right? That is how we are going to get df, right? So all our interest finally is going to boil down to taking delta t tending to zero. And in that limiting case, if the variance is zero as delta t tends to zero, then this term will not contribute as a random variable into your equation. Right? So that is what is going to happen. Recall that epsilon is normally distributed random variable with mean zero and variance one. Right? Keeping that in mind, let us see what happens to this term, variance of epsilon square into delta t, that is this term. So I'm taking delta t outside the variance, therefore it comes as delta t square, and I'm just writing variance of epsilon square, the definition of it is given like this, and this is one, right, because it's uh, epsilon is also known to be independent, right, and with variance one, therefore I will just replace this by one, and that gives me delta square e of epsilon power four minus one, and that is going to be just, so I have this. Now you have to recall from your probability, what is the fourth order moment of the normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one, okay? From your basic course on probability, you can recall that that value is going to be three. Therefore, this is three. That gives me two times delta t square. Okay. So, variance of epsilon square into delta t is nothing but two into delta t square. That will obviously go to zero as delta t tends to zero. Again, if you recall from your probability theory course that if a random variable happens to be with variance zero, then x will be just simply equal to the expectation of x almost surely. In this case, we have seen that epsilon square delta t is going to be of variance zero at the limiting case. Therefore, at the limiting case, you can simply take it as the expectation of this. What is the expectation of this? Expectation of epsilon square delta t is nothing but delta t into expectation of epsilon square, and that is one. Therefore, the expectation of epsilon square delta t is just delta t one. Therefore, this, if you take expectation, it is delta t. And using this result almost surely, you can see that this is actually equal to delta t. So that is how you will just remove this epsilon factor from this scene of this coefficient and you have this. So you can now see that your df is not simply this, there is a contribution coming from your random part of the equation also. That is, the sigma square is coming as the volatility in your model. And that plays a role here. Okay, of course, it is fixed, but 
you have no randomness, but that volatility factor is coming into this coefficient also. And that is precisely what we have stated as the Ito lemma. And this is just a formal proof for the Ito lemma. Okay, let us go back to the stochastic differential equation that we have used in our simulations. It is given like this. Recall that we had d log s is equal to mu dt plus sigma d w, right? From a classical point of view, we may write d log s as just ds by s. If you just take that and put here, you may see that ds can be written as mu s dt plus sigma s dw, where mu and sigma are just same as what we have in this equation. But in the last class, I have remarked that this is not true but you have this mu as something mu tilde, which is given by mu plus one by two sigma square. So how this extra term is coming instead of just merely mu, which is given here, that extra terms are coming now from the Ito formula, you can clearly see. So let us try to apply Ito formula to this equation and try to bring this to this form and see how it looks like. Or in the reverse way, we will start with this and we will consider our y as log s and try to see how dy will look like, right? That is this. So both ways you can do. Let us take this equation. Here, mu of s can be written as mu tilde into s, right? So I'm just comparing this with our general form of Ito process and sigma x comma t in the Ito process is in this particular case, looks like sigma s, right? And we take our f of s comma t as log s and apply Ito formula to it. You can see that dou f by dou s is one by s, dou f by dou t equal to zero and dou square f by dou x square equal to minus one by s square, get to see that d mu s is equal to this. Similarly, you can start with d log s equal to mu d t plus sigma d w and try to get this all both way you can do. So I have started with this and derived this to see how this coefficient will come out. 